This is a little video about a uh, no heat situation in an apartment at the Elm Street location. So this is actually a partial heat that's not heating up enough. So we're going to take a look at this and see what's going on. Thankfully, it's got a remote controller. Let's talk about the box just real quick. This is the cartridge. Fits in right here. This has to move smoothly. We're going to check for smooth operation of this. If this isn't operating smoothly, I don't care what controller you put on it, it will block its movement because it moves very little, but it needs to have um, just free range of motion. Now, if you came in and found one of these sitting on here, you would think that would work, but this pipe would heat up with steam right here. The temperature, the air would rise and the hot air would shut this off and this would not work even if everything was working fine. If you're in a situation that maybe this is like this, this is still problematic. You can insulate this pipe with a half inch insulation and just tape it on if you want. Better is a remote like this. This is in a good location. If you would put it on this location here on this wall, steam pipes are in the wall. This wall would heat up. It would heat up the controller and it would shut it off. So let's check for free range of motion first. I've already worked on this valve. I'll open it up and show you how I've recalibrated it. And I've also already put some rings in here to adjust the calibration even more. We're gonna watch this little wire here as I turn it down. Actually, I just turned it up. You can see that it moved up and this is moving down just a little bit, but that's perfectly enough for this valve to operate correctly. All right. I've set this on three. Well, I'm going to have to do this with one hand here. I'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to take this off. The new valves are the new controllers. Unfortunately, I'll find that screw later. Do not have the red dot. I'd recommend just set it on three with a new controller and pull it off and put your own red dot there. You see the three usually goes with the red dot. What I've done is I've recalibrated it so that two is actually three. So when I turn it up to six, it's actually seven. So you can play that game just a little bit. I wouldn't recalibrate it past that, the red dot equaling the star, because this will just start spinning on you. And then the tenant will just unscrew it and it will come off and you'll get a nice call. So I'm going to put this back on two, so the three is two, put the screw back in, and this clips in so the teeth are engaged. You can see that, screw that back in. So actually the two it's actually number three, so three is four. We can test this with the steam not being on by taking off the steam trap cover with the vacuum pump on. Can't do this at the Lakeshore address. There's no vacuum pump. We're gonna take this bus with up thing, it's actually very important. We're gonna put it right there. Well, see, I just turned it off. And it'll start opening out there. It's fairly cold in this room, so I'm not concerned about it. I'm gonna leave it on five when I leave. And you can see, it's actually the vacuum is sucking through the controller to here. And you can see it's operating quite well. It doesn't do that, doesn't make that noise in normal steam operation, only with vacuum, so don't worry about that. 
All right, so we're gonna shut that off. It's a little bit of hissing because it's not perfectly sealed. Okay, so we're actually good to go. I will come back and physically test it next time the heat is on. We should have good results. Go ahead and tighten this. Don't have to worry about that too much. It has a gasket on it. Don't have to over tighten that. If it was brass on brass, you'd have to tighten that a little bit more. This is nice. In the box, you do have these rings. If it's brass on brass, you can put that in. If there isn't a good smooth operation of this valve, you can replace it. Here is the tool to do that. There are two little notches right there that this goes in. And notice how I got it operating so that it would open up somewhere around the middle. And these numbers on the dial actually correspond. I'm opening up a instruction manual. They correspond to temperatures. So it's really slick. I was really slick, I'd have my thermometer and I'd correspond to those temperatures right there. One is 46, two is 54, three is 61, four is 68. Feels about 65 in here, somewhere between 61 and 68. It's about where it opens up, around three, four. So, but I'll leave it on five. And again, I've recalibrated this, so two is three, so five is actually six. These numbers don't mean anything. This calibration is moved. In fact, it's moved off to a point where I didn't want to set the three, the red dot to, you know, star. So what I, what you can do, we're gonna reduce, un loosen that, unloosen. I'm just gonna loosen it. And I put these rings in which is recalibrating that even more, but it's keeping this controller within a nice range so that it doesn't spin. So the stops actually work in the controller. And you have to play with these rings. These are very thin ones too. There's a couple different sizes in here. You have to play with that, with this off to get it to open up around three, four. If it's colder, then maybe you want it to open up at two. Again, you can look at the temperature chart and make a good judgment call. And that's assuming that the controller itself is working. And I'm assuming that it is, it's fairly new. I just think for some reason it's gone out of alignment. There's maybe a way to adjust that, but I don't know yet. So we're gonna screw this back on. that wire in the back, out of the way, try and keep this out of harm's way. And again, most important is this free range of motion that you can turn the controller and you can watch this move up and down. It's exactly what it's doing. So the cartridge is good that goes in here. Could be a controller, but at $70, I'm gonna risk it. And I'll set it to five. This is open. Next heat call, this radiator should be nice and warm. So again, that's the summary. Here's your box. Again, you've got cartridges in the box. These are rebuilt. Um, you also have, try to have one of these in the box. This is a non-remote. And then there's a remote controller if you have to replace the whole thing. This is the culprit. This could be the culprit right here. This little plastic piece wears into the plastic housing and that this doesn't move freely, you got trouble. Or inside this, that little piece right there is nice and clean right now, but if that's dirty, this will not move freely. It'll impede the motion, it won't shut off or it won't turn on, whichever. 
Here's the fancy dancy tool to remove that. If you have to, just use a wrench along with that and you're good. Again, here's some rings if it's brass on brass and some extra like adjustment rings if you need to over calibrate the device beyond which the point that this dial will spin off. Now this new one won't have the dot, so you would just line that up to three. If you come across that, line it up to three, take this screw out and put your own dot with a permanent marker just so you know where you're at. And if it's calibrated beyond the point where the stops don't work and this just spins off, you're gonna get a call back. All right, that's the no heat call. I'll come back and check this out with the steam on and we'll go from there. We're in the bedroom with the uh, no heat call. So now the quick thing to do is to check the windows. I found this window not latched with a very large gap right here. So the latch is like down there somewhere, which means well, seeing as the bottom is completely down, top sash has probably come down. I try not to damage this pot. I'm gonna move stuff out of the way because I will damage it. And if you're savvy, you can take a picture of where everything went and you can put it exactly back in the same spot. I'm gonna try and just see if I can. Push that up. Well, clearly it's gonna take a little more. I'll show a little video with this correctly latched where you can see the top of the latch right here. You can hear the air coming through this. I'm gonna to have to either get a ladder, climb up there and reset that. So able to get this window a little better. Now you can see the latch right there. It's not fully down for some reason. The top is all the way up and the bottom is all the way down. This must be some structural problem with the window. You're going to encounter that. These frames move, or the walls move, and then pinches the window frames. That might be as good as it gets. This is still a lot of cold air coming through. You might have to put some kind of sealant on here, hopefully seal and peel, or whatever you prefer. 